Hi, my name's Joe. I'm a crystal meth addict. Joe! Who's here at Position in Neutrality for the first time tonight? Anybody? A few of you? Good. First of all, welcome. And second, let me warn you in advance, you're liable to perceive us a little different than other meetings of the fellowship you may have attended, whatever fellowship you may have attended. The primary reason is that we intend for you to have a different experience here. What we do here, we've been doing for a lot of years now, we just take a look at the suggested instruction for a step or so a week directly out of this book. And we use this book in Crystal Meth Anonymous. Why? The process described by the authors of this book has been proven to work with addicts of the hopeless variety, addicts to alcohol and other substances. So what we do here is not really a teaching. I'm not a guru on the book, but I am reasonably good at finding my own experience in this book. And so what I'll do is I'll show you how I find my experience in the book. I'll encourage you to have your experience with the book. And if we both do our job, we will share a spiritual experience in this room tonight. How many of you have been here before and can witness for these folks that's what happens? And if, if you haven't been told in 12-step recovery, when we speak of a spiritual experience, we're talking about a sensory experience. You'll feel it. it. It will be as tangible as that sense of ease and comfort you can recall when you get ready to go take a first drink. And if it's not, we're in trouble. Right? Anyone here sober tonight? <laughs> can you bring to consciousness sitting here right now sober that sense of ease and comfort that comes at once by taking a few drinks or a few hits of something? If you can do that sober, if we don't introduce you to something at least that powerful through this process, what are your chances for permanent abstinence? In fact, we don't seek permanent abstinence, we seek spiritual inebriation. Because we've proven to not be very good at abstinence. <laughs> Anyone here remember your last day or days of addiction running out? Was that a tense time? So we don't want you tense. Does that make sense? We want you to get these authors witness over and over again to a sense of power, peace, happiness, and sense of direction, direction flowing into them. That's not a conceptual experience, is it? All right, so tonight we should have a good flow of the spirit because we're in high consciousness. We're in steps 10 and 11. Um, how many of you have been blessed with a spiritual awakening as a result of the steps and is working with others? Good deal, a good percentage of you. And the rest of you will be raising your hand soon if you want to get well. Because that's how we convert, convert garbage to tools. You take a wasted life and you employ it to help your brothers and sisters. What you thought was a wasted life becomes purpose. And in the purpose, we lose memory of suffering. Does that make sense? Okay, so steps 10 and 11 start on page 84 of our book. And they immediately precede the ninth step promises, which are hung on the walls of many AA halls. They, they call them the promises or the 12 promises. And you got to remember a drunk did that. <laughs> These are ninth step promises and they're states of being at that level of consciousness. That's all it is. And so we're going to start right here on page 84, middle of that page. Does everyone that, I guess everyone's got a book that wants one because we're out of books. Okay. So it says this thought brings us to step 10. What thought? That those promises will materialize if we work for them. And they probably wouldn't have told us that if they hadn't told us or weren't preparing to tell us precisely what that work looks like. Does that make sense? This book's completely self-defining. They don't tell you anything that they're not planning to tell you precise instructions or they haven't already told you and they're retelling you. They also use the words they mean and they mean the words they say. So it's handy to... You know, just believe what they say and remember they're the we in rarely have we seen a person fail. They've already told you who they are. If we haven't done what they did, then we may not experience what they have. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So then it goes on to say that which suggests we continue to take personal inventory and continue to set right any new mistakes as we go along. So two things there. It says that we are going to continue to take personal inventory. If I'm going to continue, I must have started. Where did I start? They showed me a suggested manner for doing a personal inventory when they showed me how to do a step four, right? And then it says continue to set right new mistakes. When did I learn to set right mistakes since that says continue? So while I was setting right old mistakes, they suggest I keep setting right new mistakes. You notice how there was a promise hidden in there. 
They told me I was going to make new mistakes. How many of you got here? <laughs> and were afraid of not being perfect. How many of you, one of the biggest fears you had to outgrow was that fear of someone else discovering you're not perfect. <laughs> that it's okay to be you. It's a big lesson. Some of you are feeling that. That's a huge lesson we learned, that it's okay to be who you are. In fact, it's really something we need to learn in recovery because we don't do a good job always in the fellowship. But if you're here, please be, you know, bring to consciousness, there's nothing wrong with you. We're going we're gonna to wake you up, that's all. Make sense? Okay. So then it goes on to say, we vigorously commence this way of living as we cleaned up the past. Where did they last discuss with us about a way of living? Any of you ever been in an AA meeting? A lot of times in an AA meeting, they read a chapter, or at least the first part of a chapter, called How It Works. And they tell us that there are these that do not recover. And what do they tell us about them? They're naturally incapable of grasping and developing a manner of living which demands rigorous honesty. Well, they wouldn't have told us that if they weren't going to tell us precisely what the manner of living looked like so that we have a shot, right? Anyone here believe you've been in the grip of a progressive illness? Then why would we not have a suggested pro progressive recovery? <laughs> Grasp, right? Okay. Okay, so then it goes on to say we have entered the world of the spirit. Notice how they didn't equivocate. They didn't say some of us have. We might have. Some of us thought we did. <laughs> We have entered the world of the Spirit. So what is it, for those of you who are working with others, clearly you're there, and for those of you who are looking to something better, what is it to have entered the world of the Spirit? How many of you felt the actual experience of those Step 9 promises in your life? Yes. Not regretting the past nor wishing to shut the door on it. Fear of economic insecurity leaving you. Sometimes it, well, it comes back. That's right, they're states of being. So... Right? They'll always materialize if we work for them, and they will always vaporize if we don't. <laughs> they didn't bother to put that little... <laughs> yeah. Well, they figured they'd let us discover that on our own. Okay. So then it goes on to say, our next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. So understanding of what? Effectiveness at what? Being spiritual. There's no wrong answer here, so don't be afraid. How many of you have grown an understanding of yourself as sick rather than weak-willed or whatever? How many of you have grown an understanding of yourself in a lot of other matters? How many of you have grown an understanding of others as you realized what was happening to you and you saw that you weren't the only one and other people knew the experience you knew? How many of you, once you were taught that this power we call God is actually tangible power and it's the subject of our experience, not the object of our belief. When God became real for you because it's an experience and not a theology, how many of you grew an understanding of that? Yep. It opened a lot of doors, didn't it? Okay. Okay, so understanding and effectiveness and effectiveness at, at any point, effectiveness may be a disciplined thought life. Later on in the 12th step, it'll tell us about what they really hope for us to get effective at. Yes? What did, we, what did we apply for a job to do? Didn't we, didn't we turn our will over so that we could be employed by a new employer, being all powerful, he provided what we need if we kept close? Isn't that what they told us in three? So pretty soon we're going to get more effective at helping others. Make sense? Okay. All right, so then our next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. This is not an overnight matter. How many of you were disappointed with that little discovery? <laughs> we're big on overnight matters around here, aren't we? Okay. So they're just telling us up front that there's going to be times when you don't feel this presence that you feel like you should feel. That doesn't mean it's not real. That means you need to rely on promise. Promises aren't here for when it's obvious. Promises are here for when you don't know what's up. Right? Okay. So then it's going to give us some more instruction. Continue to watch for selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. So if I'm going to continue, when did I start? I, you're absolutely right. I, I agree. How many of you were pretty good long before you heard of recovery? Were pretty good at spotting selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear in your fellows? Yes. <laughs> Remember I told you there's nothing wrong with you. We've just been using the equipment wrong. This is a very simple book on how to operate a very complex machine, the human mind. And all we're going to do is quit thinking something's wrong and learn to just put our thought life and realize that we're just growing in 
positive trajectory. Make sense? Okay. So then it goes on to say that when these crop up, we ask God at once to remove them. Did you catch the promise in that little bit of instruction? Yes. Yeah, when, not if. When these crop up, we ask at once. Okay? And then it says, we discuss them with someone immediately and make amends quickly if we've harmed anyone. Then we resolutely turn our thoughts to someone we can help. Can someone point to me in the steps and show me where it suggests that I can help me? The steps never suggest I can help me, but if I help you, I get the help I need through me to offer you. The world mirrors, the, the world reflects. Does that make sense? It's not a theology, guys, it's an experience. That's why we do the steps, is so that it becomes real for us. Okay, so did you catch those principles we practice in all our affairs? Do you notice how they embody all the step disciplines you've already learned? Watch, ask, discuss, turn. That's the principles in 12 they talk about, not the long list that came in Bill's later book. It's a great book, but that's not the principles that we practice in all our affairs because this book was written 15 years earlier. Does that make sense? Okay, so watch, ask, discuss, turn are the principles we're going to practice in all our affairs, and they'll go into more detail. Okay, then it says, then we resolutely turn our thoughts to someone we can help. Love and tolerance of others is our code. Those of you new to this, or those of you who have never been introduced to program and just done fellowship, did you know we had a code? <laughs> Love what? Tolerate what? <laughs> we learn to love the people and tolerate the symptoms of their malady. Does that make sense? How many of you have learned that it is handy to separate human behavior from humans if you're going to like humans? Especially once we discover we are humans. And the world's simply reflecting how we think and feel. So everything we think so wrong out there is really wrong within us. Otherwise we wouldn't be judging. Does it make sense? Because judgment doesn't hurt them. Judgment kills me. Shuts me off from the sunlight, the spirit. Okay. All right. So then it says, here's some promises. I don't know why we didn't hang these on the wall. It would make them... I guess that would really scare people, wouldn't it? <laughs> and we have ceased fighting anything or anyone, even alcohol. For by this time, sanity will have returned. In two, I was hoping for that. I got introduced to power, and based on that introduction to power, sense of power, peace, happiness, and sense of direction, I got a little hit of it, and I thought, yeah, what the hell? <laughs> and I moved through the process, and as I've started working with others, the experience has grown. Anyone else know what I'm talking about? How many of you have actually taken someone through their fifth step and really got blasted with the Spirit? That's why we do what we do. Not because we're great people, but because we hope to become better people in the process of freeing our friends. Right? Okay. So then it goes on to say that we will seldom be interested in liquor, but if tempted, we will recoil from it as from a hot flame. Now, I like Phoenix, Arizona this time of the year for one reason. It's a great example of what our state of being is if we're spiritually fit. Have you, any of you accidentally leaned on your car in the last month or so? <laughs> did anyone have to caution you that it might be warm? Or did you recoil as from a hot flame? If those two conditions are present in you, what's the likelihood that you can end up high? can't happen, can it? I'm not tempted, and if tempted, I recoil, just like leaning on the car. I'm not going to stay there. Yeah. This isn't their theories, this is their experience. How many of you have had such an experience? We can't go out and do the work of 12-step work if we get to, every time someone breaks something out, or we got to take it out of their pockets as we're checking them in someplace, that we're worried about where my rig is. Hey, quick, check their pockets, like we were, right? <laughs> I think he's dead. Well, check his pocket. Okay. <laughs> Nobody else? <laughs> ain't, no, ain't going anywhere good there. Okay. All right. So we react sanely and normally, and we'll find that this has happened automatically. Again, I don't have anything to do with it. When I turn my thoughts to another, and I ask for power to help them, to show them kindness, power, patience, I'm going to receive that. And in the process of doing that, 
my obsession with control is diminished. It makes sense. Okay? So we'll see that our new attitude toward liquor has been given us without any thought or effort on our part. It just comes. Does that sound different than some fellowship messages of we don't pick up no matter what? It sounds completely opposite, doesn't it? And the only reason I say that is not to poke fun, but folks, I am of the class that I pick up no matter what. So I need this experience, not that one. I have no problem with the just say no plan. I just cannot do it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay. So that's the miracle of it. We're not fighting it. Neither are we avoiding temptation. Why would I avoid temptation? It doesn't exist, right? So we feel as though we've been placed in a position of neutrality, safe and protected. The name of this meeting. Some people ask us, where do we get the name for this meeting? Right there. <laughs> How many of you are of scientific minds? Have a hard time, doubters sometimes because of the science. Okay, so this, they knew that about us. So what is it to be placed in a position of neutrality? How many of you have found that you've gotten to a place where you didn't have to react just because other people around you were reacting? At the cellular level, you live in a world of action-reaction. And you are part of that action-reaction. So, at least in that area, we are placed above the laws of physics as a result of this awareness. And if we are not able to be kinder than we feel like being, because my thoughts will always go with me, I'll still think, what an asshole, when I say, how can I help you? <laughs> That ever happened to anyone else? <laughs> but I can't do the work unless I get that complete rearrangement. Does it make sense? Okay, how many of you have had that experience and didn't ever have it explained to you? We want you to explain this to people. That's what the purpose of this group is. Show others. To show others precisely how we have recovered. Okay? Okay, so then it says we've not even sworn off. Instead, the problem has been removed. What's the problem? Yeah, it's largely a fear problem, right? My fear problem drives my control addiction. And then I'm always thinking that what's going on is not as it should be. But my disagreement with what is has no power to change what is. The only thing that can change is my perspective of what is. And then I can be used as a change agent to guide it down, right? When they told us we were spearheads of God's ever advancing creation. But first we've got to get on board with the creation, don't we? How many of you found that out here? I don't know how long ago it was, but I walked into a meeting one time and I was telling them everything that was wrong with what was going on. And this old biker looked at me and he goes, Joe, are you under the impression that we were waiting for you? <laughs> and it was a bit humbling, but the fact of the matter is, the way things are isn't necessarily wrong, but if it is, there's a loving way to redirect. And as we grow in the spirit, we find that out, don't we? How many of you came here and learned what the real program was and then had a hard time sitting in regular meetings for a while? Yeah, if you really learn the program, it may wreck your fellowship for a minute, but eventually you're going to be a better, better spiritual vessel. Yep? Okay. All right, so we've not even sworn off and said the problem has been removed. It does not exist for us. We're neither cocky nor are we afraid. So clearly they're talking about the fear problem being removed. Yep? That is our experience. You notice how they didn't share an opinion with us. They don't... Not speaking to what I might be experiencing, they're saying that's our experience. So you got to go back to who we is. Who's we? The first 100 men and women who have recovered. This book is the story of how many thousands have recovered. Okay, so that is how we react so long as we keep in fit spiritual condition. Why is that little promise important for us? If I wanted to know if I was in fit spiritual condition, how might I know? might ask yourself if you're fighting anything or anyone. Right? You might go back and ask yourself these very questions and see what's going on. I told you it was an operations manual. If I'm fighting anything or anyone, I'm not here to fight anything or anyone. So I need a different perspective so I can see how to be helpful. Yes? We cannot be helpful to all people, but God will show us how to take a kindly and tolerant view of each and every one. 
I can't get that promise unless I ask for a little guidance and direction from within, can I? And as I do and I start getting that power to love the unlovely, to tolerate the intolerable, to be kinder than I feel like being, do I not grow in the fact that prayer works, at least for me? Yes. I don't have an opinion whether it works for you, but I can tell you what works for me. Okay. All right, so it's easy to let up on the spiritual program of action and rest on our laurels. How many of you have discovered that little morsel? <laughs> What happened? Did you get miserable? Some people get loaded. Some people don't. Some people just get miserable. Some people go spend money they don't have. Some people get, right? We do all kinds of great things. Okay. We're headed for trouble if we do for alcohol as a subtle foe. We're not cured of alcoholism. What we really have is a daily reprieve contingent on the maintenance of our spiritual condition. So now they're going to get into the manner of living quick now that they've got us on board every day is a day we must carry the vision of God's will into all of our activities so did you know you could carry the vision of God's will into all your activities yeah. how many of you can have an idea that that's really kind of a practical description of what really happens we just seemingly know which direction we're moving and it kind of an indicated direction you know what I'm saying they give us some hints on how to do it. They tell us to always ask to have selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear removed. So probably it's going to be unselfish, and it's probably going to be honest, and it's you know, probably going to be moving in, in you know what I mean? Um, but they tell us precisely what they did. How many of you do not speak in King James language? Probably pretty much everyone, right? So don't get all caught up in an 80-year-old book where they quote a prayer book. If you don't talk to God this way, talk to God how you talk to a friend. Does that make sense? But they said, how can I best serve thee? Thy will, not mine, be done. These are thoughts which must go with us constantly. We can exercise our willpower along with this line, all we wish. It's the proper use of the will. Can you see why God never took your will that you just asked to have it aligned? How many of you have found that sometimes standing in God's will is complex and difficult? And impossible for us humans, isn't it? Because every fiber of our being says, this is wrong. Remove me. But it's perfecting me. Or you. How many of you have watched a loved one going through this? And you can do nothing but pray. You want to strangle them, but all you can do is pray. That's how we learn what powerlessness is. We learn it from our friends. We learn a lot more of it than we ever did from chemicals. Okay, much has already been said about receiving strength, inspiration, and direction from him who has all knowledge and power. They say much has been said. Sometimes if you miss the second step experience, the second step experience says a new, you know, if we have carefully followed directions, we've begun to sense the flow of his spirit into us. And then they talk about these worldly people who flatly declare that they've got this new sense of power, peace happiness and a sense of direction flowing into them so it's never been conceptual it's about a feel of the flow and and you don't have to believe it to experience it that the experience will change your mind just like they said okay so what we're talking to you about is power not deities then you figure out where the power comes from when you get grown up enough in the spirit and have followed their direction make sense okay so then it goes on to say, to some extent, we become God conscious. So what do they mean by that? Aware of his surroundings. Yes, because consciousness is not just awareness, it's awareness of being aware. Mm -hmm. So not only am I feeling this sense of inspiration, but I know that although it's flowing through me, it's not of me. And I know this because I've tried to produce it on my own, and I couldn't. Any of you have done that? Yeah. Wanted to feel that buzz, and you thought, well, I'll just do it myself. And usually when we really become aware is when we're offering help to someone else. Yep. Right? Because that's when the window opens into consciousness and the power flows through. Why do we work with others? Other than the obvious reason that it ensures abstinence. Why do we work with others? Because we get a buzz. It's called inspiration. Inspiritus. The root. But, but eventually you actually grow in answers coming out of you that you didn't know. How many of you have had that experience? Okay, so we've developed, begun to develop this vital sixth sense. So what do they mean by vital? Life-sustaining. Life. Yeah, sounds like it might be pretty important. When they start talking about, you know, vital organs, it's not like something I can take or leave, usually, right? 
So they're, they're using words for a reason. They want to call our attention. How many of you can grasp what they're talking about as you've grown in this and you know this tangible presence that we feel? Know what they're talking about when they talk? Have you noticed that you have a new way of seeing? It changes the way you see, doesn't it? Hmm. Okay, but we must go further and that means more action because now I'm going to try and improve conscious contact, right? And see, if you haven't been introduced to tangible power by this time, you just close the book and quit. Because no one tries to improve consciousness of a concept. I bet they got pills for that. It's psych stuff. It is. We, we've got to be improving consciousness of an experience, or, or we're not on the right path. Does it make sense? Okay, so step 11 suggests prayer and meditation. We shouldn't be shy on this matter of prayer. Better men than we are using it constantly. It works if we have the proper attitude and work at it. So what works? Prayer, prayer and meditation works if we have the proper attitude and work at it. What's the proper attitude? <coughs> if you come from a more religious background, the, the, the caution was the time is coming and indeed has now come that we must worship in spirit and in truth. If all you've ever done is read this book, then we learned that we had to fully concede to our innermost self. This is yep. the first step in recovery. Mm -hmm. So what... There, Two descriptions, very similar, of the exact same event. Does that make sense? So we're going to be in a constant dialogue with our thought life, redirecting our thought life when it's less than useful. Have you guys ever had an experience of a storm in your thought life that you can now readily admit it was less than useful? How many times today? <laughs> Which is why you can now see why they're using it constantly. If we don't learn to discipline our thought life, we just sit here miserable blaming the world for how we think and feel. And then we truly are powerless. Okay. All right, it would be easy to be vague about this matter. Have you ever heard anyone be vague about this matter? Yeah. Pretty much everyone's ever fucking talked about it has been vague about it, right? <laughs> but these guys were specific, and we want you to see what they said. Mm -hmm. Yet we believe we can make some definite and valuable suggestions. Would you like some? Sure. Yes. Well, let's go through them then. When we retire at night, we constructively review our day. Well, that'd be a change, wouldn't it? How many of you, when you retired at night, destructively reviewed your day? How many of you have destructively reviewed someone else's day? So we're already starting to change, and you can see these are simple instructions for how to improve our thought life. Okay? So then it goes on to tell us, you remember how they told us we were going to watch for selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear as we go along? You guys all do that perfect today? Nope, none of us do. That's why step 11, now all-inclusive, has us looking at it again. Were we resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? Yes. Do we owe an apology? Now they're going inward. How many of you have tried to calm down and you really knew you were wrong, but you weren't ready to admit you were wrong? Did you find that you could not find rest? You kept trying to spin it so they were at fault or no, you no one saw or fuck it, or whatever. <laughs> Have we kept something to ourselves which should be discussed with another person at once? Can you see how that would be handy? How many of you are new to this and you've got a sponsor that has you calling them every night and doing your review with them? Yeah. You know why they do it, don't you? I mean, they're hoping that you'll get the discipline, but they're doing it to make sure they do. If you're working with people and you don't have people calling you every night to make sure you get disciplined in this, you're missing a boat. Because if you've got to answer the phone and go through everyone's day with them every day, you have no choice but to go through yours. They drive us through our steps, guys. Okay, so were we kind and loving toward all? How many of you have had a day when you were kind and loving toward all? Check that box, right? And then remember this is our thought life. <laughs> what we're trying to learn is the impossibility without consciousness of a power greater than ourselves to, to not have a war in our minds some percentage of the time. And, and if we don't do these disciplines, we don't learn it in a tangible way. Any of you just been driving along, everything's just ducky? Yeah. And then all of a sudden some thought comes in and you're like, motherfucker. <laughs> so the next one you see gets lambasted with it. I, sometimes I end up in the wrong room, Terry. You never know. I always ask, and then they tell me, no, we're perfect, Joe. Uh. 
Okay, so what could we have done better? You notice how they didn't sit in the misery. They moved right to... Let's get, let's get on. I can't change that, but what I could do is do better, and I could perhaps admit promptly I'm wrong. I could, right, get back into discipline. All right, so were we thinking of ourselves most of the time? How many of you discovered we do that way more than we thought we did that? <laughs> or were we thinking of what we could do for others? When you found that you were thinking of others, did you find you were freer of you? Yes. Is that not, not an enticement to discipline our thoughts to think of others and their, their needs, right? They told us in the first step, our very lives depend on our constant thought of others and how to meet their needs. And we forget that after we get here. But if we don't do that, then we end up coming back, right? If we get that opportunity. Okay, of what we could pack into the stream of life. But we must be careful not to drift into worry, remorse, or morbid reflection, for that would diminish our usefulness to others. Any of you ever do that? Yeah. Beat yourself. Instead of sharing it with another and giving someone else the opportunity to help you and help you unpack, you hold it to yourself. And Anyone do that? Did you realize that that too was selfishness? Okay. okay, so after making our review, we ask God's forgiveness and inquire what corrective measures should be taken. So we're going to go inward and get answers. Power, peace, happiness, and a sense of direction. Does it make sense? We're going to make our review. And then the very next thing it says, on awakening, let us think about the 24 hours ahead. So what happened between my review and awakening? Yeah, you probably just went to sleep. How many of you have received instruction in your dream state before no. yeah you can you can get you can get revelation in your dream states one of the ways the spirit will communicate with you it's a fact not a concept or a theory um, so you might want to you know if you follow these disciplines you'll start finding out some things make sense that didn't make sense okay okay so then it says we consider our plans for the day before we begin we ask God to direct our thinking before we begin what before we begin our day, before we begin our consideration, before we begin whatever. How many of you, as you've grown up in this thing, your first conscious thought is seek power? Yeah. How many of you did it all on your own, no thought or effort on your part? It, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, it? Then we ask God to direct our thinking, especially that asking that it will be divorced from self-pity, dishonest, or self-seeking motives. How many of you came here without a prayer life? Had either religious prejudice or didn't have any... Okay, so if you come here without a prayer life, this makes it very simple for us alkies, us addicts. God, please direct my thinking, especially be divorced from self-pity, self-seeking, self-whatever, dishonest motives. Because I can do that all day long if I want to. Ever, have you ever just been doing your regular course of the day and all of a sudden you're mad at somebody? Yeah. Okay, well that would be a good time to employ this little prayer. Yeah. Does that make sense? And it doesn't sound like King James language, does it? Just divorce, you know, direct my thinking, especially to be divorced from self-pity, dishonest, or self-seeking motives. If I will quit trying to see what I can get out of this interaction, I will see what I can bring to this interaction. Sometimes the only thing I can bring to the interaction is my silence, but sometimes that's huge. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so then it goes on to tell us under these conditions we can employ our mental faculties with assurance. For after all, God gave us brains to use. we got to show people that. How many of you have gone for years in the rooms and heard, don't think. Oh, that's a dangerous place to go into your mind. I hear that. For 80 years, they've been putting think, think, think on our walls. We'd like for you to wake up first. But once you are awake, how many of you have found that you drift off into mental slumber many times a day? So every time someone offends, we're reawakening, aren't we? Oh, yeah. As long as I'm still in the experience that they're causing how I'm thinking and feeling, I am in a powerless state. The first step in recovery is to realize they're reflecting how I'm thinking and feeling. So bless them for awakening me. Don't curse them for disturbing my slumber. Yeah. Wow. Just a disciplined thought. Does that make sense? Yeah. Think it would be a handy little trick for us addicts of the hopeless variety to know? <laughs> Find a little ease and comfort in the world without going out in the world to get it? Yep. If i got to go out and arrange the lights, the scenery, and the ballet to suit me all the time, I'm going to be a busy sumbitch. Because <laughs> I change what suits me 
on an ongoing basis. Anyone else? No one else? Oh. You know what it means to employ our mental faculties, don't you? If they're driving the way, if I think they're causing how I think and feel, they're employing my mental faculties. And they're using them against me. Do you understand? So we take the power back by recognizing what we're seeing. Okay, so then it says our thought life will be placed on a much higher plane when our thinking is cleared of wrong motives. So the first thing to understand is we live out our entire lives between our ears, not out there. Which is why it's so hard oftentimes for us to explain the experience we're having to another. Because unless they can feel us, they don't know the precise experience we're having. So we got to maintain the thought life because this is where we live. How many of you have been in really destitute situations but felt free in the thought life? Yeah. Anyone's ever been in active addiction, you know, right? Yeah. Out there homeless on the street, you know, only suckers pay rent, you know, just... <laughs> <laughs> we know the drill, you know what I mean? My thought life was cool. And, and spiritually we do the same thing. How many of you got here and you had lost everything? It took a while to get anything material back. How many of you still don't have everything materially back? But we've found some peace and freedom in it, haven't we? So our thought life is cleared, cleared of wrong motives. See what they're saying? This is a real tangible expression. We want people to know, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, whatever you think the problem is, the main problem centers in mind and it's a, it's a flawed perspective of what is going on what its purpose for you is. Does it make sense? Okay. So then they're going to talk to us about what it's like to walk in our thought life. In thinking about our day, we may face indecision. Has that ever happened to you? Yes. Okay, well, remember they said, rarely have we seen a person fail who's thoroughly followed our path. So a certain amount of our path in this new walk in the thought life is going to involve some indecision. Have you discovered that's true for you? Yes. Okay. So we may not be able to determine which course to take. So they tell us what it is, then they tell us what it looks like. So have you ever felt conflicted about yes. some perceived choice you had to make? Yes. Yep. Okay. So what they do is here we ask God for inspiration and intuitive thought or decision. So now they're telling us what meditation and 12-step recovery is versus any other meditation practice you've ever had. This isn't meditation in the yoga studio or meditate none of that and there's nothing wrong with that I'm not poking fun but this is meditation on the fly this is the temple this is what I'm maintaining and so I ask God inspire me I'm indecisive and it will come to me as an intuitive thought or decision and so the meditative response is going to be that intuitive thought does that make sense yes. so then it goes on to say we relax and take it easy how did they learn that by doing it. They learned it by not doing it first. <laughs> you got to understand, everything in this book is about all the mistakes they made to get to what they suggest. And they suggest it based on an experience. So how many of you asked for an intuitive thought or decision and then received one and thought you could improve upon it? Yes. Or kept spinning so fast trying to come up with one on your own yes. that it, there was no potential for it being intuitive? Yeah. Okay, so what they learned is chill, right? Think about the thermostat. When you see that it's at a temperature you don't want, you're feeling uncomfortable, don't you just walk back and change it to the temperature you're hoping to be? Do you sit and stare at it and jump up and down, or do you go sit down, relax, and take it easy? So we already know how to act in faith. All we're doing is just setting the thermostat and then chill. Okay? All right, so we don't struggle. We're often surprised how the right answers come after we've tried this for a while. How many of you have noticed that the right answers started coming and you found you were moving in the right, the next indicated direction smoother without all the disturbance? Yep. Okay. What used to be the hunch or the occasional inspiration gradually becomes a working part of the mind. So that's what they're telling you. It's not their theory. It's what happened for them. Okay. Being still an experience and having just made conscious contact with God, it's not probable we're going to be inspired at all times. Why did they put that little tidbit in there? It's kind of a downer. So you don't get depressed. So that you'll know when you're not inspired at all times, it's part of your growth too. And there's a promise and there's a solution for not being inspired. What do you do to get inspired? You think of others. Right? Okay. 
We might pay for this presumption in all sorts of absurd actions and ideas. Nevertheless, we find that our thinking will, as time passes, be more and more on the plane of inspiration. We come to rely upon it. So they have a faith based on tangible presence on their lives, even though half of them were atheists or agnostics to begin with. Can you see how that would be useful to us, regardless of what our set of beliefs is? Okay. So we usually conclude the period of meditation with a prayer that we be shown all through the day what our next step is to be. That we be given whatever we need to take care of such problems we ask, especially for freedom from self-will and are careful to make no request for ourselves only. We may ask for ourselves, however, if others will be helped. So does that sound limiting to you? No. It doesn't as we've grown, it does when we're new. If you don't understand why we don't ask for ourselves, it's because we don't know what to ask for. And it's, if, you know, the mental illness is so su substantial when we're brand new. As you grow in this, you realize the world's causing how you think and feel, not, or rather, sh reflecting how you think and feel rather than causing it. And you know helping others. You know this, you know, everything's got purpose. You start to know those things. But in the beginning, how many of you came here with court charges and difficulties, jobs? Okay. And you just wanted that shit fixed, right? Yep. But we got the power to walk through it, to go get new jobs, to, to go pay back our bills. And so our hopelessness and our resentment and our dishonesty and our selfishness and our, those types of things got taken away. Things I didn't even readily acknowledge I had. Yeah. So as we grow in this thing, we, we realize you can ask for anything you want as long as others will be helped. But I don't want to get caught in self-delusion, which I do without my conscious participation. Okay, so we're careful never to pray for our own selfish ends. Many of us have wasted a lot of time doing that, and it doesn't work. You can easily see why. So you see, they just went through what I just tried to help you understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if circumstances warrant, we ask our wives or friends to join us in morning meditation. So how would I know if circumstances warrant? They'd probably ask, rather than me demanding what people should do. How many of you spent a lot of time, you know, you found a hookup, now you needed everyone to be on the same hookup? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was. And, and did you find you had a lot of unwilling participants? Or non-participants? So what we learn is that, that people are either attracted to it and move in it, or they're repulsed by it. And none of it has to do with us, it has to do with how people are doing in the spirit. You don't have to announce your spiritual enlightenment, folks, any more than we have to announce the lights are coming on when we hit the switch. It's self-evident. When the lights come on, it fills the room. There's no announcement. Lights coming. <laughs> when the light comes on and you, same thing. You won't have to tell anybody. They'll know. They may not know what they know, but they'll know. You know what I'm talking about? We have a process of awakening so that although they have it, but they don't know it, we can awaken them to it. Okay? All right, so if we belong to a religious denomination which requires a definite morning devotion, we attend to that also. So if you have a religious practice, do it in addition to your AA practice. If not members of religious bodies, we sometimes select and memorize a few set prayers which emphasize the principles we've been discussing. That's why I showed you the God direct my thinking, right? There are many helpful books also. Yes. Suggestions about these may be obtained from one's priest, minister, or rabbi. Rabbi, be quick to see... <laughs> rabbit, whatever. But be quick to see where religious people are right. Now notice they didn't say be quick to see that religious people are right. We're not lecturing you. Just be quick to see where they're right. They describe an experience much like what these people found. In fact, it identical as you grow. And you'll find out that it's okay to grow in the spirit and do what you want to do. Okay? Okay, make use of what they offer. As we go through the day, we pause when agitated or doubtful. Has that ever happened to you? Yes. How many of you discovered that you had a power greater than you when you were able to pause because you used to just go right off? Yeah. That's the first sign of growth for a lot of us is that we're not in nearly as many altercations as we used to be in. Any of you ever discovered that? No one told you what was going on? What is that but a power greater than you operating through you if you can still see how you think but you have the power to act differently? We talk to people like this is some mystery. No, it's not. It's happening in us and through us. Power to be kinder than we feel like being. And we still see the unkind thought, but we act in the kind expression. Yes? Okay. So, and ask for the right thought or action. We constantly remind ourselves that we are no longer running the show. Humbly saying to ourselves many times each day, Thy will be done. Did you notice by this 
level of consciousness, the delusion of self-will is gone. The idea that I have a will separate from all that is, that has any power, is pure delusion. It just is. God's will has no opposite. So we awaken to what's going on and grow in the moment and we're used as we're used. We're beings, not doers. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So we're then in much less danger of excitement, fear, anger, worry, self-pity, or foolish decisions. Why would I want to be in less danger of those things? Because I hate to admit I'm wrong, right? Any of you hate to admit you're wrong? Of course. We don't want to not be perfect, ever. Even though we say, well, I know I'm not perfect. But we don't mean it. Okay. We become much more efficient. How many of you discovered that right away? Brand new in recovery. You're, you're going to jobs, you're meeting commitments, you're doing... How many of you, years in the deal, still doing a lot of the same thing? So they're telling us right away, once we invite this power in, once we start moving in this direction, we instantly, right? God does not make too hard terms on those who earnestly seek. And so we got to remember, you guys have been around a while, we need to remember that what we see as annoying habits is enthusiasm. Do not dampen it. Encouraging, never discouraging. Okay? Okay, so we not tire so easily so easily for we're not burning up energy foolishly as we did when we were trying to arrange life to suit ourselves. That's where they're telling you we never tried to treat your chemical addiction. We tried to treat your control addiction. And when we stop fighting with everything and anything, we learn that we're free. Does that make sense? So then it goes on to say it works, it really does. Did enough of you get that experience that indeed it does work and it is working? And the it they're talking about is the process. The power's always been at work. The process reveals to me that power in me. Yes? And eventually then I realize the sensory expression of it. And when I talk to you and we share that power, we both feel it. How many of you have had that happen? Yeah. And then we find ourselves talking about our hookup just because we like to buzz. Yeah. Anybody ever did? Yeah. Okay. So we alcoholics are undisciplined. So we let God discipline us in the simple way that we have outline so what is the way they just outline watch ask discuss turn those those I'm being disciplined by this world around me to watch my thought life so the world's not causing how I think and feel in fact it's helping to perfect my thought life if I'll participate in the plan does that make sense so then it says this is not all there's action and more action faith without works is dead the next chapter is entirely devoted to step 12, so next week we'll look at step 12. Thanks much.